Let's put down the chemistry textbook for just a second and grab the history book. Which ancient civilizations are you learning about? Egypt? China? Rome? All of the ancient civilizations we still talk about today have at least one thing in common. They harness the awesome power of chemistry. Let's begin in the Stone Age. For thousands of years, early humans wandered the earth. Using stone tools and weapons, they grabbed what food they could find and huddled together for warmth. Then our ancestors discovered a very, very important result of certain chemical reactions. Fire. Fire was great! You could cook food over it, you could keep warm, you could stay awake later plotting hunting strategies thanks to the light it provides, and you could keep hungry predators at bay. But early civilizations figured out one of fire's finest features. You could use it to make stuff out of other stuff. As early as 6,000 years ago, Egyptians used copper to make tools. They figured out that if they exposed copper ores to fire, they could extract the precious metal and pour it into molds. Archaeologists have found copper pins, chisels, needles, and other artifacts all over Egypt. Egyptians were also known for their colorful paint. That famous Egyptian blue is believed to be the first synthetic pigment dating back to 3000 BC. Using crushed natural chemicals, or mineral salts, ancient Egyptian painters created vibrant murals in the tombs of the pharaohs. The next big technological leap was the discovery of alloys. About 4,000 years ago, curious African and Asian folks figured out that, with the help of flame, you could take this copper stuff and combine it with this tin stuff and make stately bronze. People usually think of gunpowder and fireworks when they think of ancient Chinese chemistry. But thousands of years before those inventions, Chinese were the emperors of bronze. Ancient China produced thousands and thousands of bronze objects they used in rituals. Plates, cups, bowls, and other vessels were used for offerings to ancestry at family temples and for burial rites. It took a lot longer for ancient chemists to figure out iron. Turning iron ore into something useful was a much more complicated process than making bronze. But with the help of fire, iron production and smelting began around 1200 BC in the Middle East, and it took another few hundred years to spread to Europe and China. But the true masters of iron were in India. By about 300 BC, India was making steel, something Europeans didn't figure out for centuries. The Indian fusion of iron and carbon made swords of so-called woot steel that were resilient, sharp, and strong. Today, there are refined production techniques for making all sorts of steel, but the swords of Damascus steel were extraordinary for their time. 2300 years later, scientists still can't replicate the technique for making the razor-sharp blades. It's important to mention that ancient civilizations weren't just big doers, they were also big thinkers. While the Indians were mastering steel, philosophers in ancient Greece, like Democritus and Aristotle, started asking questions of how nature is put together. Many considered Democritus to be the father of modern science. Democritus and his mentor Leucippus developed the idea that everything is made of atoms, an infinite number of indestructible units of all shapes and sizes that have always been and always will be in motion. Some modern historians and scientists say Democritus simply got lucky and recent evidence just happens to confirm his hypothesis. But the Greeks weren't that thrilled with Democritus either. Rumor has it that Plato, another thinker of the time, wanted all of Democritus' works burned. Plato thought Democritus was too materialistic that ideas ruled the universe. Democritus and Plato the Hamilton and Jefferson of their day. But like some sparring heads of state, parts of both their ideas contributed to the formation of science. Though, after several centuries, it turns out Democritus was more correct with his atomic theory. Now, Aristotle, a student of Plato, meanwhile wrote one of the foundational texts of Western science and philosophy. It was called Physics, 
but it was really just about nature and the world around Aristotle. He believed everything on the planet was made up of four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. He also thought the heavens were made of a weightless substance called ether. This philosophy was extremely influential and dominated science until the European Renaissance in the 1500s proof that you don't have to physically make something to be hugely influential in the study that became known as chemistry. Now let's talk about one of the most Hollywood loved ancient civilizations, the Romans. Sure, from a chemistry perspective, the Romans were big time. They invented coinage of all kinds, thanks to the Greek knowledge, concrete and cement to name a few, but their biggest chemistry conquest, plumbing specifically indoor plumbing. The Romans crafted pipes out of lead metal, which doesn't occur naturally on its own, so you really have to know your chemistry to extract it from rocks, and the Romans did. They were also the first to seal pipes in concrete to help deal with water pressure and bursting pipes. All of these accomplishments happened over about 4,500 years, a mere blip on the evolutionary radar. From melting copper pins to crafting lead pipes, the civilizations we still talk about thousands of years later left their mark with metal. And those metals were forged, formed, and reshaped with chemistry.